Hey, the projector turned on this morning. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake. Hey, Mr. Devil, wouldn't he? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. But that's all right. I know. I, Where I imagine it's done? probably overheating. So you know, what happened? There's something wrong with it. Oh. Lord. I just tried it a while ago. It came on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hallelujah. The bulb is getting old, then it's probably overheating. Oh, Santa. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I am redeemed. I've been.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Is that why we're here this morning? Yes, hallelujah. I believe, I believe the Bible says that's why we need to gather. Amen. Give praise to him. Glory to him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Has he done anything good for anybody? Yes, he Woke did. me up this morning. Hallelujah. Woke me up this morning and by oh, hopefully my in your right mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what today is? Today the Lord has made. Well, that's t Larry's thing. <laughs> Where? We just, yeah, that's true. I know. I was just picking. No, I was just thinking that today is one day closer to going home to be with Jesus. Amen. Eternally. Being, being with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't know how many days, but we know every day is a day closer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremy, come on up and take requests this morning. Yeah. Are you in your right mind this morning? <laughs> if you want to call him that. <laughs> Debatable, they say. You need to ask Holly that. No, do not ask her. Do not hey. ask her. God is good. Yes, amen. <clears throat> You know, it's, it's crazy how things change. You know, when I was younger, I never had allergies. And I guess after I got 40, every April, May, whatever, sinuses go crazy, nose runs, sneeze everywhere. But I'm thankful there's one thing that never changes, and that's the love of God for me. So he is unchangeable. So he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Isn't he? So. God is good. Any, uh, I don't know if you asked prayer requests, any prayer requests? Anybody have any requests for prayer that they need? Mm -hmm. It took her baby because she has cancer. Mm -hmm. The chemo treatments to say are working. Yeah. The, this, this um, tumors that are written in our head are shrinking. Praise the baby's Lord. doing fine. He's got a head of hair. It looks like it's only about 30 weeks maybe. And he's got hair and they said he's doing fine. So far, God is answering this prayer. Might stand Amen. I keep praying for him. Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy on us this morning, Lord. We thank you for the Lord God just wake us and Lord clothed in our right mind with a breath to praise you with, Lord. And as we come here to this place that you ordained, Lord, we just give you all the honor and praise, dear Lord, for everything you're doing in our life, Lord. Dear God, you know, dear Lord God, these these requests that have been made, dear Lord God, the ones that still need a touch, dear Lord, the ones that need to be healed. Lord God, the ones that lost loved ones, dear Lord God, just be with them, dear Lord. Bring comfort that only you can bring. God, just as we come here, dear Lord, to this part of service to sing praises unto you, Lord God, we just ask that you'll, dear Lord, hear us, dear Lord God, and that you pour your, your blessings, dear Lord, and your spirit down upon your people here this morning, dear Lord God. We just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. Dear Lord God, we just thank you for your grace and mercy and what you're doing in our lives, dear Lord. We just thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray these things, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, I love living for the Lord. Everybody's 
in this old sinful world. Hardly a comfort.
I'm doing good. I don't know. I was just singing. We were singing that laugh and shout. Never tell him I love him more and more. Yes. You think we'll need to go around saying, how you doing? No, no. We'll know how we can take it. Oh, amen. We'll be laughing and shouting and oh. joyous. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord eternally, yes. sister. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Don't be nobody saying, well, I'm not feeling too good. Praise God. I got up with a headache this morning. Won't be none of that stuff. <laughs> Praise God. We'll be shouting and laughing and praising. Glory to God. with the Lord and with one another. Hallelujah. It's going to be a glorious time. Today's going to be a glorious time. Hallelujah. Because Jeremy's going to come up saying thanks. Thanks. I give him thanks. Amen. Thank you, Lord. After he walks and gets the word. I was actually going to ask him earlier to do it, but he prayed. So. <coughs> ben and Victoria are going to song, of course, next. So, Victoria.
blessed abundantly And I can't forget that moment When in my life you made such a change Since your spirit came, I've not been the same I just want to give you thanks So thanks, thanks I give you thanks For all you've done Oh, I am so blessed Abundantly, and I can't forget that moment when in my life you made such a change. Since your spirit came, I've not been the same. I just want to give you things. So, things, things I give you. Suzanne, some song from you or some group, whatever you want to do. Next. First, second, first. Nice. I can't stay at home. What's the name of it? I can't stay at home. There's no home in this world anymore. Sister Andrea next.
Are you searching for something for help in troubled times? Where do you go? What do you do to gain your peace of mind? It seems no matter Look close, you'll see 
My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm counting my blessings as I journey along. Good friends and a family and a place to call home. A church where I worship, the Bible I read. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm never forsaken, I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond measure, just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. When Satan comes tempting and it brings up my past, I tell him I'm forgiven or it's buried at last. The bloodshed on Calvary now speaks for me. For my Lord is taking good care of me. I'm never forsaken, I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond measure, just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. every day. Amen. I was fortunate enough to have our son home this past weekend just for a hot minute, but I'm just so thankful. God's moving and he's working. And if I just sat here and gave you all the praise Amen. for all he's done, I'd be here a while. So I'm just going to say God is good. Amen. And I appreciate it.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know just, just what you're living for, and I can't say for sure what Jesus means to you. We love the Lord and thank you for always giving me. And, uh, you know, when you get old, you forget things. And I got to thinking, of course, I'm always thinking. Um, it's, it's a good thing sometimes. Because when you read the Bible, and even though you may have heard somebody preach about it or you've read it before, it's brand new to you. It's like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that before. And I was reading in Luke, and uh, when Jesus you know, got baptized and he went to the wilderness and the devil tempted him, for some reason, I thought he just tempted him three times, you know? He just said, uh, you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. He said, took him up on a high mountain. This is one me and Paul likes. Take him to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms 
of the world in a moment of time. That was the first PowerPoint, by the way. He just showed it to him. Boom. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and then he told him, you know, just jump off of this big old cliff, tower, temple, wherever you're at. Just jump at the angels there. And I thought, you know, I always thought that was just the, the three. But um, it says here that when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed for a season. So there's no telling. And it goes back to, I remember one time I was talking about, in John, you know, it says that everything that Jesus did, a book can't hold it. It'd be, you know, it wouldn't be enough. And I got to think there's probably no telling what all the devil tempted him with. And the devil came back. He just said he left him for a season. And that's the same way with us. You know, we're, we're tempted, and sometimes, you know, he says that, that we'd be washed, and, and then we're, you know, the inside. But if we don't get Jesus inside of us, then the old devil's going to come back with seven more guys. And, and that's what he does. He knows what you can withstand. So he's going to come up with something and just slip it in there. And, and I just love the Lord and thank him for everything that he's done. Because, uh, you know, like they were saying, no, they don't give him a toehold. Don't give him anything. But so, so often we give him stuff. And, boy, when he gets it, when we give it to him, he uses it. Yeah, so y'all just pray for me. <clears throat> you know what key that is? H. 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 Oh, H. I thought I had a new key there for a minute. I thought they said H. That's what that was. That's <laughs> okay. Time we would play that one for me. <laughs> okay. Troubled in life. So twisted and swayed, deceived by and lied to by sin's deadly way. On the bottom of desperate, no hope could be found when I had no.
Father, we're so thankful for this day that you've given us, Lord. We're so thankful for a place that we can come and worship you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just ask that you bless our brothers. You bring forth, Lord, the words that you gave them to talk to your bride with, Lord. Jesus, help us prepare our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I was on my way to church and I had a little extra time with him and he gave me rest. You know, we get so burdened sometimes with the world and things that are going on and, and we're not into sin and nothing like that, but just the cares of the world and stuff. But I found I can have fine rest in Jesus. I'm glad he saved and he and he satisfies and he supplies all my needs this morning. I'm glad I'm under the blood this morning. You know, I was thinking as I was reading again about like the brother had said sometimes we see things in there and we look and back and say, well, I didn't quite notice it that way. But uh, when he called Lazarus, and I remember the time he said, Phyllis. You know, I don't know if he yelled it or whispered it, but he said, Phyllis. It's time. And oh, I remember I cried and I weeped and I, I just so, uh, uh, just so sad because of the sin I, I realized I was in at such a young age, but I'm so glad. That mercy came down. He saw that young one. It's time, oh God, to come on up. Well, glory to God, I'm alive yes. with Jesus this morning. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. He's so good to me. I appreciate Praise him so Lord. much. Amen. I just I wish I could tell it the way I feel, but I can't. But I know it's Amen. good. It's good. Amen. It's good. Amen. It's good. It's good. I do love him this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I remember that shout. That very first one. It's kind of like, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Yeah, who is it, Lord? He said, it's Jesus. It's always Jesus. When Jesus calls your name, brother, you know it, and it stops you in your track. Sister, there's victory in Jesus this morning. My Savior forever, he sought me, and he bought me by his redeeming love. Isn't it gracious? Praise the name of the Lord. Enjoy that little... Little fault Brother Doug had. He had to keep him working on that and mature that, brother. We want to hear some more of it. I love that. that. If Satan tempted Jesus, do you know he'll tempt you? He tempted the son of the living God. And he thought he had a shot that he was going to trap him up. But with you and I, he more than thinks and he knows he can trip us up because he does it on a continual basis. But Jesus laid down a blueprint. Blueprint. He laid it down on how to defeat him. I read that a while back. I remember I mentioned a little bit in the sermon how that when Satan come to Jesus, he said that he took him up on a high mountain. And then he took him to another place. But I was reading the scripture. I found out he come to a point. Jesus said, you ain't taking me nowhere else. I've gone as far as I'm going. And we can do the same thing. If you let the adversary, he'll take you in the spirit of your mind in places that'll take you way off away from God. But you do like Jesus did. He said, you may come and tempt me, but you ain't taking me nowhere else. I'm going to be settled. And he began to talk to him about the word of God. Aren't you glad Jesus, he didn't just leave the battle un undone. He fought him to a standstill. There, He defeated him there on that mountain. In that wilderness, he come back and fulfilled all that God asked him to do. But he said, I ain't done yet. He said, after I leave this cross, I'm coming to see you, devil. I'm coming to where you at. And I'm going to come and take all the power, the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And my people won't have to do this no more. All they're going to have to do is say, oh, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, as Sister Phyllis likes to say. Help us, Lord. And well, glory. The house of God ought to be full of them. Well, glory is on a continual basis. Pray. Thank you. Good to see you and your wife. Lord bless you. Good to see you all this morning. And all your faces. I really wish I wasn't looking at them from up here. Pastor's supposed to be up here looking at all our pretty faces. But this morning, we're going to get it from a different view and just kind of see what the Lord has in mind for us. Lord always got something for us. Good anointing here. And good, sweet presence of the Lord. 
I have been up here before when it felt like I was trudging through, through quickstand. And you're looking out and all the people's hands are crossed and their faces are so solemn and you go, oh God, help us Lord. But that ain't the case this morning. There's a wonderful anointing in the presence this, to this day. I believe you come to worship the Lord. Is that right? Amen. Last night, I was in the back studying a little bit and meditating on the things of God and Brother Leroy had set up the, the movie night. And I think that's a good thing. I think more we can get together, the better. More children of God put off things of the world and gather together around things of God. It can't do nothing but enhance the relationship we have with one another, which enriches the relationship we have with God. Paul, you can't have a relationship with him if you ain't willing to have one with me. So the more we get around one another, the more we're able to forgive one another and put all that nonsense aside, well, to make a long story short, which I ain't never done, but he comes in and, and they get ready to start that projector and I'm in the back listening for that movie to start the lights to dim, but they never dim. The movie never comes on and all of a sudden I hear singing and I hear playing and I hear praising. I had to come out, I couldn't help it. I said, what's going on? And everybody inside the congregation was standing and clapping their hands to God and singing it and tears were flowing and there was a, the movie night turned into a worship service. I said, Lord, this is wonderful. It's what we're supposed to do to start off with. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And they done, I said, Lord, I know the Lord's pleased with this. The Lord's pleased when his people come together and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to read some scripture in Psalms, the 29th chapter. After a while. Brother... Brian back there said, if I read over four scriptures, he'll sing a song. <laughs> so if I ain't read four scriptures by the time I'm done, somebody raise their hand and say, brother, read another one. Because <laughs> we're going to keep him on the hook. And I believe it's going to be a great blessing. You know, Jesus said that the Father seeketh some people to worship him. Yeah. Over in the book of St. John, he said, the Father seeketh people to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I thought, how ironic. We ought to be a people seeking to worship God. We ought to be a people that seek him day and night. You know, there's some, four, some angels before the throne of God that rest day and all night. But they continue to bow to foot of the, foot of, at the foot of the throne of God and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Aren't we not to do the, how much, and he done a whole, they don't know grace. Them angels don't know nothing about no grace and redemption. And about sin, but we know all about it. We was in the depths of the muck and mire and sin, and Jesus come by and picked us up. Amen. Oh, I thought we to praise it. He said, but they, he said they, he, the Father's seeking somebody to worship him in spirit and truth. I thought, you know, if you want to be found, if you're out on an ocean and your motor quit, and you're way out there and you know no way to get back, no covering, the sun's beating on you. You got no water, you got no food, and you're just at the mercy of the ocean. Wait, and all of a sudden you hear a plane flying over. Yeah. You don't lay down in the bottom of the boat and say, shh, shh. Don't say that. No, you get to your feet and you begin to wave your arm like this. And you just said, hey! In your mind, you know you can't hear you way up there out of that noise. And that's why Satan said, Jesus can't hear you. Oh, but he does hear you. You do everything to make yourself visible and to know and say, Lord, I want to be found. Do you want to be found this morning? When the Lord comes among the congregation of God this morning, seeking somebody to worship him, Elmer, it might as well be you. That might as well be you. That we stand to our feet in praise to our God. It pleases him. It's what we're going to talk about is worship. I was going to talk about something else, but I can't get it off my mind. Tremendous necessity to worship our God. Amen. That'd be all right. Yes. Because the more you worship him, the more you begin to know him. The more he reveals. Don't, Larry, you don't know it all. We get to a point sometime, where every time I preach, when I'm done, I thought I didn't preach everything that can ever be preached. <laughs> Lord, I might as well die because I'm done said it all. It's every time. And then you go back the next day because you, 
Because you empty yourself out. It's like that when you're worshiping and praising God. You ought to go home wrung out like old dish rag. Just squeeze every ounce of energy. If I'm not walking, I ought to have to kind of limp and crawl out the door. So when I'm drained, but you'll find out something. There's something inside of you. It's like a well of water springing up in the everlasting. It revives you. But the Lord wants you to deplenish it down to the bottom. That he might, he might express him to us to you. I'm more. I got more for you. He said he was grieved with Israel because they walked with him for 40 years in the wilderness. He said they never knew me. He said time and time and time again I'd reveal myself to them as a provider and a protector and I clothed them and I fed them. He said I, I went before them as a cloud by day and a fire by night. All they had to do was look and see me. He said for 40 years they refused to let me express myself who I am and how my good, what I promised them and where I'm going to lead them to. I think sometimes we grieve the Lord because he's, 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 he's expressed himself in this congregation in ways that it, it, ought to, it ought to just shake us to our core foundation. Can you see God in this conversation, Tanya? Can you see God in this, in this assembly? Sister Debbie, you see him. I look and see him and see the miraculous things of God. He's delivered us out of conflicts and condition and sickness and all kinds of things. Where things that this assembly has faced would have ripped most assemblies apart and they would have fragmented. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen among this message. Because somewhere or another we took our eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ and I let other things get in between me and him. See, but when you have a conflict with me and you, you got a conflict with him. And we see those things come, but by his grace and mercy. It wasn't our great, it wasn't our great intellect because we were so much special. I can't explain to you. I couldn't sit down and say, well, this is why we done it this way. Oh, it was him. It was all him. He could have left us out on the sin heap where we was. But he didn't do it. He come looking for us one of these days. And he come and he found me. He's still looking for you. He's still looking for us. He, got to, he wants to express a whole lot more of himself to you and I. Y'all believe that? Well, is he worthy to be worshipped? Yes. Is a question I asked Wednesday night. If you know who he is, you'll say, yes. He's worthy of all worship, of all praise. Is there any time in your life, Kenny, is there any time that he's less worthy to be worshipped? Sometimes we come in the house of God and you don't feel, and, and I, I know that things transpire in this life. We, sickness comes and it goes and troubles come. Sister, we just talking, troubles come. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have some problems. They're going to come from day to day. Paul, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know you ain't got no promise of tomorrow. Though you're born again, baptized in Jesus' name, full of the Holy Ghost, child of God. You do not have no promise of tomorrow. You ain't got no promise of health tomorrow. There ain't nothing certain and stable in this life other than Jesus Christ. But he's stable. He's certain. He said, I'm the same. Isn't that ingrained in your soul? I don't care where I'm, but somebody missed it yesterday. I mean, it's said today and forever. Because just in, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to tell you what's in me. He's a, because Jesus, he ain't part of my life. He is my whole life. He's just singing that song, all the things, he's my rock, he's my shield. He's my sword and buckler. He's my anchor in the times of storm. He's everything, everything that I am consists up in him. Aren't you glad he got you in the palm of his hand? Aren't you glad he included you, Sister Phyllis, in this great meeting that he's putting together in this great forming together of a bride of Jesus Christ. He's doing it by his grace. All he asks us to do is come along and consent. Nothing you, can, you can't make yourself righteous and make yourself holy, but you can take what he gives you and you can put it on and you just become. We're going to become the bride of Jesus Christ because some of you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart and to the Depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely yes. My soul says yes. That's all. Oh, him I listen to all the time on the on the internet. 
About 300 black folks get up in that church and they begin, yes, Lord. Mm, yes, Lord. And they all sway it from side to side. They all so engrossed and entrenched in this song. They, that's the way you worship God. Worship it in an event. It's not a one-time thing. It's a life. But more than that, it's a connection. It is a spiritual connection that you, you get hooked into those bowls that the scripture talks about. You get hooked into a spirit that's not yours. You get tied into the living Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, brother, that, that, that is exactly what you do. You get, it's a spiritual thing. That's the reason he said if you worship God, you must worship him in spirit, huh, in truth. I was going to talk about that in about an hour, but I'll talk about it now because I won't get to it in about an hour. Spirit. This is a spiritual walk, brothers and sisters. We walk not by sight. We walk by faith. It's a spiritual walk that we come and we, we, we don't really see the direction that the Lord's leading us all about, but I go anyway. Sometimes it don't look like, but I don't think we ought to be going that direction. I think the children of they grieve God because every time they didn't think they should go to the direction they're going, they said, Moses, we ought not be going this direction. In a time or two, I said, Moses, we ought not be going this direction. Of course, I'm talking about Moses over there, said right over there something. Bro, we ought to be going that direction. But I have learned over the past years. God don't, God don't mind me thinking that way. But don't say it. It's all right to, to get an opinion. I think we ought to do things different. But however, God didn't call me to lead the people out of Egypt. God called who he called. And I learned to say, whatever condition, Lord, I'm going to follow. Because I believe with all my heart that you set us on a path that leads to glory. Think of when they get rocky sometimes and they get, they get a little foggy sometimes. The ministry don't even know where we're going. If they did, we'd lay it, play it all down and write it out for you, give it to you in a note, and you can go home, you can come prepared every time. He don't do it that way. But he opens a little bit here. He opens a little bit there. And he just wants you to stay focused upon him. That's the key to this whole thing. Stay focused. And what did the apostle say? And look into Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith, he said, that's how we run this race with patience. Look into Jesus. Always look into the Lord Jesus Christ. He may delay sometimes. He may stay back in Bethany while his best friend down there died. You know in his heart he wanted to go. But there was a spirit inside him. The father was saying, hold back. It ain't time yet. Yeah, but, yeah, but, oh, it's very difficult for us to hold back. Lord, this is happening and we need to deal with it. I don't know where we're going, but we just, y'all just, y'all just go with me. And you just get to the point sometimes that you feel certain of the direction, what needs to be done. And it would have been a godly thing for Jesus to go down to the first day and Lazarus wouldn't have never had to die. That's what Mary said. Lord, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. He never died. Oh, but what, what tremendous power do we now possess inside the body of Christ because we know and no matter what circumstance you get in, heaven don't care how sick you get. If you go to the other side, it don't change the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He was able to preach a message to him. He said, Lord, he said, Lord if you'd be to my brother out there, he said, oh, yeah, he can be raised up last day. Well, we know that, Lord. He said, no, you don't understand what I'm telling you. I am the resurrection and the life. Not I will be. Not I used to be. I am the resurrection and life. I don't care what circumstance we find ourselves in, brothers and sisters. He's still the resurrection of life. Everything he's able to meet and pick up. Oh, I've seen him, I've seen him rise me out and raise me out of situations that it looked like sure, absolute death. And I know there's times some of you say he's gone. He done went too far. And no, when we first walked out of church 40 years, 45 years ago, I didn't ever know I was going to return. I didn't have no clue. When me and Russell and Larry and Wanda and Wendy and, and a bunch of us and Stevie and all of us, Doug stay. You stay. Tanya stay. God love y'all. Yeah, you, was, you, didn't, you weren't old enough to leave. When I was old enough to be, you got to be fair to old to be dumb. You can't get dumb as a little child. But, but if you ain't careful, it'll sneak up on you. And we got, our, got our, we got our focus off on the Lord Jesus Christ. I can remember as just a small child 
that the focus was always kept on the Lord because the people around me were always focused on the Lord. You know what they did when they come in church, Phyllis? They come to the altar of God and they begin to pray. They begin to seek God for 45 minutes an hour before church. Well, that's all I know coming up. So that's what I did. 10, 11 years old, around the altar of God with tears streaming down my face. And not just me, but Steve and Yvonne. And all of us. And ones that ain't even here no more. I remember seeing the altar full. That's what we knew. And it kept us focused. But somewhere along the line, it didn't become as important to me. So I would lay back when I got about 15 or 16. That going praying thing didn't, didn't that, that ain't really necessary. I'm, I'm going to come and take my base and I'm going to thump on a little bit and we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. I'm going to tell you some of the best playing, the best music in the world. Don't take the place of one minute at the altar with God. It, 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 you, can't, you can't replace one for another because this focuses you on Jesus Christ and him alone. Oh, that's what worship does. It brings a focus only between you and him. It shuts out everything else. It's a communal worship. He said, oh, come let us worship the Lord together. Come let us bow down before the front. Let us do these things. But when we're doing them things, sister, I don't know what you're doing. When I'm engaged in my worship, like it's a spiritual and truth worship, I don't know what's going on around me. See, but when you ain't in spirit and truth, you notice that, what are they going to think? Paul, what are they going to think if I come down before the altar and just raise my hand? He said, oh, Lord, I'm sinning again. Oh, he's been sinning. It got nothing to do with sinning. I just want to know him more. I just want him to hold me. I heard a thing the other say that sometimes the Lord can see him a million miles away. Then in an instant of time, he's closer than the breath I breathe. Y'all ever noticed him to be that close to you? Closer than the breath you breathe. That's inside of you and on you and, 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 and all around you. He consumes you. Well, the Lord will do that. In the worship and praise of him, he will utterly consume you. I didn't tell you about the truth. What truth is he talking about? If we worship him in spirit, and to get in the spirit, you got to get off some of your carnal. No, you got to get off all your carnality. How I many know we, we spirit and we flesh? I wouldn't. Why I wouldn't God? It wasn't that way. If I designed, I'd say, "Well, when you get baptized in Jesus' name, get the Holy Ghost, your carnal man dies. You never have to deal with him again." Wouldn't that be great? Just yes, I mean, he's gone. He's dead. He's buried. You bury somebody in the graveyard. You don't have to fool with them again. But they're gone. But this spiritual experience. Every day I got up in old times there again. Yeah. Brushing my teeth, I'm looking at me in the eyes. And I'm thinking all the things that I need to do. Old time he is. Oh, we got to. So big. But that spirit man said, we need, we need to talk to the Lord a few minutes. We need, we need to, the first thing we do is talk to the Lord. Your carnal man don't mind being religious. But don't get radical. Don't, don't start all that praying stuff. No, no, I mean, I, I, that just ain't necessary. It is necessary. Paul, it's necessary. If we don't do it, you can't make it. You know, because it's, it's, a, it's a weapon against the adversary that he has no answer to. Prayer and seeking the face of God is something that works. It overcomes him every time. Amen. I have never went to God in earnest prayer. Not one of them made me lie to sleep prayers. No, but I'm talking about, oh God. Lord, I got to get over this thing. I, I keep coming back to the same thing and I, I can't seem to get victory over it. He said, then abide a little while. Just, just linger a little while. Holy Ghost didn't fall on him in, in 45 minutes on the day of Pentecost. It didn't come in a day nor two nor three nor four. How many days was it? It was 10 days. I was hoping somebody called it off so I didn't say 11. It was 10 days. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, oh, here it come. There was a rustling. Love that story about David when he said it was time to go take Jerusalem. And he, but he said, we, we, we're unable. The Lord said, I'll tell you what. He said, you go, you can camp down around there. He said, and when you hear the rustle in the mulberry, what it, the, the best translation I said, he said, when you hear the marching, when you hear the marching above the mulberry trees, he said, you march on. He said, something fixing to happen. I'm hearing the marching just in the mulberry bushes a little bit, brothers and sisters. In this hour, in this time, in this assembly, it's time to take back some things that we have left. Say sometimes that Satan stole them. He didn't come get them. We just left them. It's what the first age done. They turned around and left 
The first love. This was my first love. Crying out to the Lord. That's, that's what got you. That's what redeemed you. It's what opened up access to him and you found him, didn't you? Sister, he said if you knock a little bit, he said he opened it to you. He said if you ask, Jennifer, you'll receive. If you called on, he said I'll answer you. He ain't never changed. He does not change at any time. I keep trying to get back to this truth thing. Can I keep it and leave it? First we got, first we got to get, now you got to get rid of you. You know what's you. Don't, don't, don't you know what's you? And I know it's offensive for God and God, you can't enter into his presence with it. You can clap a little bit with it. This old man, he can sing. He don't sing well, but he sings. You can, you can dance and shout and run out. You can do those things in your carnal nature. But when it comes to entering into the presence of the living God, he don't know nothing about it. He don't even want it. He don't mind the emotion and he don't mind the, the carrying on and going to the exercise. You watch them on television. By the thousands, they'll fill arenas and they'll sway and they'll, or they'll, they'll get caught up in emotion. But when they leave, nothing has changed. They don't know one more thing about God than anything in the world. Because they ain't willing, they don't even realize people. I don't, I don't I'm going to get on politics. But a man who said, I, and they asked him, did he repent? He said, repent, I ain't never done nothing wrong. Well, I need to repent. I don't never do nothing. You know, people believe that. That's what the agnostic believe. He don't see no wrong that he does. He's getting good people. But since I've been enlightened to what good is, I knew it ain't no good in me. There never was. No. The only thing good about me is that infusion of the Holy Ghost to come and change me. And I had to make sure that I get that old carnal man crucified and pushed down and dead if I want to walk into his presence without any wrath, without any guilt, without any shame. I want to go in there. I want to give him something first. I want to give him. I owe him something. That's where we're going to Psalm 22. We owe him something. But you got to get that carnal nature completely subdued and it's got to, it can have no input. It always wants to have input, but if you give it a word, it'll talk you out of a blessing. Yep. Get right in and talk you right out of something God wants to give you because the Lord won't give it to the old man. He ain't got no inheritance. He got no place. He said, you ain't got no place. It's like that Sanballat and Tobiah. When they come and trying to get to, they want to help the Jews rebuild that wall. They said, we're going to help y'all. <laughs> and finally, Nehemiah, he said, look here, y'all ain't got no place. You've got no inheritance. You've got no right in any of these things. Y'all head on back where y'all come from. We're going to do this. Your old nature ain't. That's why San Blight to buy in there. They ain't got no right or no place or no inheritance in the things of the kingdom of God. All but that new creature. He's got some treasures untold that we have not tapped into yet that the Lord is waiting and it's all ready to give to us. But you, you got to come in spirit and then you come in. You know what the truth part about? I often look at all the truth is these, these great revelations in this book that we have to look up about all these, all these wonderful things that God has done. Let, that ain't the truth he's talking about, brothers and sisters. That truth is the truth about you. Spirit and truth about your real, genuine condition, your spiritual condition. I mean, you don't know your spiritual condition of carnality. Is that what he told the lady to see in church age? He said, you say, that you're rich. You're increased with goods and you don't need nothing. That's our perception of our relationship with God. But Jesus said, I'm going to put some truth on you. And if you want to worship God in spirit and truth, we're going to have to get to the truth of the crux of the matter. We're going to have to take our life out and examine it. I mean, oh, God knows every thought you've got. He knows every, he knows every grievance you have, every hurt you ever had. Sister Phyllis, he knows the first time you was hurt if you still hold, if you're still holding to it. The first deep hurts are hard to let loose of because they deep and they cut deep. And if we find through the course of this life, you're going to get cut. On this, this ain't an easy road, brothers and sisters. As long as he never promised you a rose garden, he didn't. Matter of fact, he promised you a rugged, rugged road just like he walked. He told us how he said, y'all don't know nothing about it yet, but you're going to. You wait till you get out in the field where I called you to be. You're going to find something out. You're going to be hated. You're going to be spit on. You're going to be cast in prison. You're going to be beat. And somebody's going to be put to death. 
He didn't promise the easy road. But he promised at the end of this whole thing, he said, it'll be worth it all. So I said, it'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. It'll be worth it. But we're going to have to get to the truth of the matter. I was going to say, Sister Grace, Sister Grace. Sister Grace, I don't see so good neither. Sister, you got to get everything pulled back. And you got to look in things that we've heard through the years. You know, you, pick, you, you hold on to these things you've heard through the years. Amen. Mom and daddy told you some things. And aunties told you some things. And, and brother Paul told you some things. And, and Andrew told you some things. And you heard some things and you've seen some things. I don't know where this is going to see all that. Let me, let me, let me temper this out of my mind a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes your mind gets going to say, well, wait a minute, Lord. Lord, I, I don't know. But you just... We learn things going through life and we hear things and we see things and we see examples put before us and it, it forges a image inside of our mind on how things are. Well, the Lord wants us to sit and let, him, let, let the Lord reveal to you how things really are because it, you'll find most of the time it'll shatter what you thought was and it rearranges and God builds it. But that's for, she, it ain't just Sister Grace you got to do it. Tanya, you got to do it. And I got to do it. Jennifer, you got to do it. That the Lord, because he, he breaks it all to peace because our perceptions don't, don't affect him. It don't change what he's called out to do in this, in this assembly. But if we all went to fall upon the rock in all our perceptions and ideas, oh, this is plumb good, and let it all fall upon the rock, and Victor let all our ideas and what we thought about in our imaginations get crushed upon this rock, he said, I'll put some of that living water with it and I'll take some of that clay that was balled up. He said, I'll begin to mold and form it and I'll forge it back. He said, when I get through, behold the bride of Jesus Christ. That's what we'll see. But we got to be willing to do that. That's truth. Stevie wants you to look at the truth. This is what I think. Oftentimes we look at things the way we'd like them to be. God wants us to look at the things where they are. When he got back to Laodicea, he said, I know what you say about yourself. He said, but I'm going to tell you, you blind, you wretched, you poor, you miserable. Always oh, just told that blind, wretched, naked, poor. No, he didn't say it though. He, 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 he distinctly broke down each one of them. You're blind. What are we blind to? We have been a very enlightened people in this age. We know more about the things of God than a revelatory book than any age ever has known. But yet when he looked at this generation, he wasn't looking at the Baptist and the Catholic when, he, when, when, that, when that was inspired by the word of God to say you, you, you lay in the sea and you're blind and wretched. Oh, he was looking at us. He was looking at the called out people. The world, the world ain't going to accept what he's going to do no how. But he was speaking to you and I in this generation. He said you're willingly blind to the circumstance that's really going on. He said, I've given you all these wonderful gifts and revelations and these talents and these great ministers of God and he's given us a prophet and apostle and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He said, I give it to you as a gift. But yet you're still blind on your own spiritual condition. I see men and women of God that can tell you everything Brother Branham said, every teaching that he said and they know it backwards and forwards and in every sideways in every which direction, can go through Brother Jackson's pamphlets, the spoken word, the contender. Brother Brandon's books are the spoken word, and I have read hundreds of them probably, and I love them, and I get inspired every time. But if I could quote every one of them from cover to cover and back to front, what does it profit me? Does it make me any closer to the Lord? If I know every paragraph in Brother Jackson's contenders and every time a, something comes up, I say, oh, let, let, let me check this contender. You can't do it that way. You've got to check the spirit of the living God. And he'll lead you right back to this and what this book says. And if what does any contender in the spoken word ain't written in this book to start off with, it ain't no life in it to start off with. It was just an idea that comes somewhere. But the Lord, is, he's enveloped. And he's blessed us with all these great truths. But he says to the last generation, you're blind. We're blind to our own spiritual condition is what he's trying to say. And Jesus says, if you want to worship me, you've got to get to the truth of the matter. 
Be willing to bring it out before your face and break it down. Where is that scripture? Jeremiah. Let's read it. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. I might as well close the book because it's gone. But it's all right. This is wondering what you're talking about, Willis Moments. Lord, Lord, what you're talking about? I didn't have no idea about doing this. For y'all's under 50 that don't know who Willis is, ask your mama. <laughs> Sometimes you just get into circumstances, you know, you don't know why, and you hear something, and you know what you're talking about. I, but he said the word, 7 and 1, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house. Where at? Where are we at? All right. He said, and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah, that enter into these gates to what? To worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. What do you want us to do? Amend your ways and amend your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. He said, I'll prosper you in it. I'll bless you in it. He said, but you ain't telling the truth about how you're showing up to the house of God. You ain't coming in in truth and worshiping in spirit and truth. You're coming in with pretense and you're coming in with, with, with ideas and you're coming in with conflict and you, you think it's all right to walk into the house of God and be bitter with your brother. It ain't all right. It ain't all right to have conflict and contention among members of the body of Christ. Yeah, but they deserve it. It still ain't all right. Jesus said, if you, Steve, if you're going to bring a gift before the altar of God, you know what he said you need to do first? He said, leave it. If you've got contention with your brother, you make it right, then you come back and offer the gift and I'll accept it. That tells me if we've got contention with our brother and our soul, and sometimes the circumstances is that I, I can't make it right with her because she won't make it right with me. She's hard-hearted and hateful and mean. Mama, but I love her. I don't know what to do without my sister. Taking care of my mama. She let the cat bite mama, but other than that, it was all right. And if she won't hear me, I can't make her hear me. But you know, if she loves God like I love God, and she wants to offer God something like I want to offer something to God, she's going to say, that's the truth. Let's just, let's leave it lie. But I can't expect her to do what I want her to do if she tells me, brother, I, I, I forgive you. I hold no bitterness. I'm, yeah, but she ain't doing what I want. I think she needs to do this. She needs to come up here and confess to all the people what she was thinking about me. And I, what the word, I heard her. Wendy told me. Yeah, Wendy told me. She needs to come up here and confess all this to the, she don't have to do that. All she got us is she says, I made it right with the Lord. It's all right with me. So, but I, I didn't mean to hurt you. I never intended. Then that has to be all right with me. I'm going to go back to the Lord, and then I'm free to offer the gift before God. And I won't be burdened. I won't be worried. That's another thing worship does. It squashes worry. It just, it, you can't worry when you're in worship with the Lord. But if you, let me read another scripture to you. Matthew, the second chapter. I, I read it the other night. But y'all let Russell read scripture over and over and over. Y'all going to have to let me read. <laughs> read a couple over. I was talking about the, these, these magi that come to Jesus. They come in search of Jesus. Travel for about five months, 700 miles, because they seen something. They seen a star. You know, Tanya was talking about it last night. Why? Where did they get, where did they get this information? Where did they get this, this unction and longing in the soul that they were continuing watching for something? I believe it was way back in Daniel's day when they were when Israel was taken captive into Babylon. That's where the, the magi or the magicians or the astrologers, that's where they got their start at. And they grew and when Daniel talked about one God and Nebuchadnezzar found out after they had thrown 
the Hebrew boys over in that fire and they come out. He said, oh, he said, there ain't but one God. That's their God. There is no other God. He said, don't worry about no statue. All these, we don't worry about that no more. He said, there's just one God. It began to, it, 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 it found it something inside of these men's heart. And over the years, it, they were so stirred by, da- by Daniel's relationship with the Lord because when it got time to worship the Lord and he knew if you do, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. But you know what he done? He, three times a day, morning, noon, and night. I said, I can't help what you say. It doesn't matter the cost. It costs something sometimes. If you really going to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, it comes at a cost. That's the reason Jesus told Laodicea, he said, you're blind, wretched, naked, poor, and miserable, you don't know it. He said, but I counsel of you. Buy of me. Buy of me gold that's already tried in the fire. There are some tried remedies that work every time. And that's if I'm offended with you or I'm, I'm, I'm hurt and wounded by you, I'll go to you till we make this thing right and I wash your feet if I have to. I reevaluate the situation and say, well, Lord, I ought not got the hurt to begin with. I'm going to look up. I can't seem to get off this. Sometimes there are circumstances that the brother that hurt you is having such a struggle and you don't know what it is. It may have happened when he was four years old. Mama, what did you do with my poor brother? <laughs> don't know how she, he was the first one. So it was practice time. The first one always gets all the practice and beatings and knocks around. But she had a few left for me over the years. Of, but but yeah, you don't know why a brother or sister behaves in the way they do over a certain circumstance that, 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 that seemed like they ought to be to get over. But you wasn't there when they were five and six and ten. And you don't know what influence they had that come against them that scarred them in such a way that the Lord's still dealing with. That make any sense? So I ought to be able, because my relationship with the Lord, to give him some grace on it. Especially when I get the truth, truth meter out and I know there's some things deep inside of here that I don't want you to know nothing about. And I don't want God to tell you. But I know them, and I've been struggling with them for years after years after years. That's truth. And the Lord said, I'm still working with you. I'm still working on you. Let me work on him. Give me the grace. Let me work on him a little while. When this thing's all over, there ain't going to be no scars and wounds. It's all going to be done away and gone, and we are going to be one people. What people joined and fused with the Lord Jesus Christ as he is with God. What a plan God had laid out here. Now, where was I at? God and, oh, let's talk about those three, three, three men. I believe they got stirred when they seen Daniel and, and they seen the three Hebrew boys and it left an impact on them. So over the years, they heard what Isaiah said. They heard what Micah said. They even may have heard what Balaam said that out of us, there's, there's a star coming. There's a scepter going to come right there out of that, right there out of that, right out of that Israel nation. A great king. Micah talked about him. He said, and he's from ancient of days. This king to come and steps out of eternity is the way this one version put it. I love it. He said, that, that, they, they, they didn't go all the way across that thing just to look at a king. Kings were born all over the world. But this one was a very special king. He wasn't just to rule Israel. He was to rule the world. Heaven and earth was brought into his submission. All of it belongs. He said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. It all belongs to him. He's the Lord of Lord and the King of kings. Yeah. Everything's subject to him. They said, this is worth traveling for. Yeah. Is he worthy to be worshipped? Yes, so when they come into the house, let me tell you what they did. It said, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child. And when they come into the house, this is after the trip. This is after an anticipation. They were looking for something specific. When they come into the house, they look down at the carpet to see what color it was. I'm going to say that in your book. Well, maybe they looked up at the walls to see, see if it flows together. The walls don't go with a brick. They didn't do that. They didn't look over Sister Terry. Sister, how long your skirt? <laughs> no, they did not. Sister, how long your hair? No. 
They didn't look around the car. They didn't even look at anybody. When they looked and seen the child in Mary's arms, what did they do? They fell. That's what the power of God, that's what true worship is all about. When you see him, all your strength leaves you. And you fall down at the feet. So much for getting it in your seat. I know we like, and I don't mean to, y'all do mean to come back good. Get it out of your head. This ain't about a sit in your seat and get it type of, type of a relationship God looking for. It ain't about sit back, fold your hand and bow your head. Oh, in the name of the Lord. No, no, that ain't what this is about. That ain't what worship is about. Oh, brother, you can worship in a quietness of your home and you're having, yeah, you can, but you ain't. No, you ain't. You, 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 you meditate a little bit or you, you know, you're thinking about something else. But when you get in, engrossed in this spiritual realm where, where the Holy Ghost, you do like them angels, you fall on your feet, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You do like those four and 20 elders, you cast your crown down at his feet and say, thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm so thankful for all the good things that you've done. That's what you do. You fight, you be, and, and then you begin to worship. And he said, and then... When they worshiped, they opened up their treasures and they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Did we ever go to Psalms 29? Y'all keep distracting me so I can't get there. Worship is feelings and ex expressions of reverence and adoration offered to a divine being. Is Jesus a divine being in your eyes? The world debates it. The Buddhists, they don't think he was nothing at all. The Muslims, they saw he was a prophet. Back in Jesus' day, he said, whom do they say that I am? Well, some say you're a prophet. You're Isaiah, Jeremiah. And Herod says, you're dying the bad. We're going to come back from the dead to get him. Just no for what I did. He said, yeah, but who do you say I am? Not the Christ, the Son. The Son. The only begotten Son. The one which was and is and is to come. It's not just the son. It's the only begotten son of God that always, he said, from the ancients of days, he said, before the world was, he said, I was with my father. He said, I'm going back. Oh, that last day on the cross, he was thrilled. He, he, he knew what awaited him. Do you know what awaits us, brothers and sisters in Christ? Oh, there's a great, there's a great time coming. There's going to be a meeting in the air in a sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to be there because I'm going to fall on my face and worship him every opportunity that I get. There's such power in it. Tom, you realize the power in worship. It's, it's, it's a weapon. It breaks every chain. It's a weapon that Satan cannot hold you if we invest ourselves in the worship of God. It, it transcends every, Satan is about worry, anxiety, and, and fear, and grief, and, and doubt, and all these things. But when you begin to worship him, it crushes those things. It, it, it puts you in a position that Satan can't touch you. When you're in the world, he can touch you. When I'm under a car, I promise you, he touches me all the time. And you may be worried. Oh, and you may be working at what used to be NFL. What are they now, brother? What? Mobile lumber. Can Satan touch you there? He's got emissaries everywhere. Go to Walmart. He'll touch you. He touches me before I get in there. I hate that thinking door. He touches you. But get involved in worship. He can't go there. He can't step where you can step. It's too high. It's too deep for him. He can't walk in there. Let me get to that. Let me get back to Psalm, which where I was going to write. I read a little note thing by A.W. Tozer. You ever heard of him? He's a famous minister back from the late, early 20th century, 1890s up through 1950 or 60. But he made a statement. He said, worship is the jewel that the church refuses to pick up. He said, it's a great, it's of tremendous value. And God has delivered it to the people. It's great value, but they just won't pick it up and put it on and realize the tremendous value there is. How I many know there's the tremendous? Has God any, done anything for you that's valuable? 
Is it valuable enough to sell out everything and purchase that pearl at great price? Is this going to worship cost you something? I'm sorry, but it just does. It costs you to get here when church starts. You can't walk in a service 30 minutes late and throw up your hands and begin to worship God. No, because you're still, you're still chained to where you was. It costs you something to break loose. You know what? It's time to be in church. I'm going to be there. I know all these circles, and these things will still be here when I get out because God ain't going to fix those things when you come to church, but he's going to fix you. So he, sometimes he calms the storm, and sometimes he calms me. Most of the time I come in the house of God, we need a calming. But if you come in praise and worship, Paul, he'll calm you. But you got to put yourself in a position for the calming to take place. I have come into the house of God and left less calm than when I come in. Because I didn't come in to worship. I'll come to complain about you worshiping. I don't like the way you worship. My God, you got to do something about that. That's because I didn't come in the right heart. That ain't the right heart. I ain't never went home to the Lord and said, I'm glad you told him that. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. He said, I told you to shut up. I'd have I'd, I'd let you know not to say that if you'd have talked to him before you come. <laughs> so he, he, he don't want us to worship. Let me read this. Let me read the scripture to you. Where I thought I was going to start. Psalms, the second chapter. Psalms, the 29th chapter. I might want to look at two first. When do we go to 29? I'm familiar with this. I'm almost out of water. It must be time to just about eat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me see. Psalms 29 and 1. I was reading over the book Chronicles. I looking for something else, but it always serves my soul. I want to read about David and how he come before the Lord. Remember, he went to get the ark. It had been two generations since that ark had ever been back into Jerusalem. And he said, you know, I just got a longing to be in the presence of the Lord. He said, that ark represents the power of God. And when he went and got, he first sent after it, sent after it with a new cart. And they went and got it news and put his hand on the cart and it killed him. Y'all know if David would have put his hand on the cart, it would have killed David too. God got a, he's got a specific way he wants that ark transported and it was by the priests that were ordained for that thing upon those, upon those staffs. And he, he said, because we done it not right at the first time. He come back home, he said, leave it there. And they come back and he wept and he, and he sought the face of God. He said, God, why? Lord, I know that you want this to transpire. God wants us to have a, he wants us to have a relationship. He wants the power of God to fall in this place every time we come. It's supposed to be that way. It was not out of the ordinary for folks to be healed in that first age. That didn't happen every now and then. The Bible said Peter walked by people and a shadow touched them and they were healed. They anointed cloths and sent them home with them and they were healed. James didn't say for no reason, if there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. He said it because it wasn't a common thing. We ain't supposed to be sick the way we are on a continual basis. Paul explained later, he said, you're that way because of the way you treat the things of God, specifically the body of Christ. Because we the way we treat each other is what he was talking about, not discerning the body. You are the body of Christ. Not discerning the body brings on sickness and even death. That's what Paul said. He said, we need to straighten those things up and do it right. God wants the free-flowing spirit to be from bench to bench, place to place, every person in here, but we got to do it right. You got to have the right heart. I got to have the right heart. Let me read the scripture. But when the second time he done it right, he said, when they got to the edge of the city, that David danced and danced and danced till his clothes fell off. And his old wife, she said, I hate him. She despised him in her heart. Look, he said, you made a show of yourself. He said, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> we ain't seen nothing yet when our hearts get right and we're doing the thing right according to the word of God. Right. You're going to see some dancing inside the body of Christ. 
And none of us are going to despise one another. We're going to love it. Because this is what the Lord intended it to be. We're this close. We are this close. I believe it's already at the edge of the city. We just got to make sure everything's in the right. Everybody's in the right position, in the right place, doing what they're supposed to do, thinking how they're supposed to think. Well, I missed something way back. I'll pick it up in a little bit. Getting everything out of the way. How many know Jesus is faithful to forgive you? If we're talking about getting these things right, it all starts with forgiveness. But his forgiveness isn't a problem. It's yours. He don't have no problem forgiving. And aren't you glad for that? I was thinking as I was working the other day how I thought it. Jesus said, then they come and say, how many times we forgive? He said, 70 times seven. I wonder if Jesus ever regretted saying that. He set the rule. So every time I come before him, Lord, you said. Lord, you said you'd forgive me. At least 70 times seven. And we ain't going to offend each other 490 times a day. That's a lot of times. But you can offend God 490 times because he gets, he's holy. And it, it don't, just a little word offends him. Brother, a little word that I say cross to you. It may not, it may seem insignificant, but it means something to God. Never forget, me and Russell always poke at one another, did over the years, we, and enjoyed it. And, but one time Roy was up here preaching. No, Roy wasn't preaching. Roth was preaching. And there'd be one other time that he poked at me. And, and it didn't really bother me because I, I know I, that's, that's what we do. And Roy come over to us after the thing. He said, brother, he said, I seen an arrow. And it went straight to Tommy's heart and speared him in the heart. Just that little word. And it, and it also didn't mean a thing by it. But God is more sensitive than you are. He's more sensitive than I am. And that, that, that struck a chord and we really try to change things up a lot and things that, uh, because foolishness comes to your mind all the time. But this ain't about foolishness. This is about a people getting ready. This is about a people getting holy, about a people getting well, about a people getting prepared, prepared and perfected and ready to go out of here. Little words matter that we say. It, 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 it's, it's imperative and incumbent on us to... Consider carefully the words we say before we say them because you don't know how they're going to affect somebody. You, you never know. And I have to say, Lord, forgive me. Every day I have to say, Lord, forgive me. And then I, you do something almost every day, Lord, forgive me. But the thoughts you think, oh my, they're louder than the words you say the Bible said. Think about some of the things you think about through the day. How many, I'm glad Jesus had to made that rule 400, at least 490 times. And if it takes more than that, he'll still forgive you because he loves you. He said, 29.2. What's the first word in there? Give. Give. Big old G. You ought to see that G is this big in this Bible. Give. If I could speak Hebrew, Hebrew, I could probably do it for you like he actually said. I think it's gargled and it's it's heavy on that. G, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Do what? Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory. To give, give, give. We often come to get, get, get. That's the mentality. When we come into the house of God, oftentimes we're going to get something. Get some. No, no, he said you need to give. You owe him a whole lot more than he owes you. You know, matter of fact, what he said, he said, give him glory due unto his name. He's due some glory. He's due some worship. He's due some hallelujahs and bless him, Lord, and well glory. He's due, he's due them things, brothers and sisters. He's due a shout and a hand wave and a hand clap. And a, he's due. Victor, he, he made something of you when you wasn't nothing. I know you when you was, didn't have no light in you. You were dark and, and mean and hateful and grumpy and grudgy. You didn't know how good Brother Law was. You had no idea. But Jesus lit you up. And when he come and lit you up, uh, he, made a, bro, he made a vessel of honor out of you. He made a vessel of praise and a vessel of, of, of grace. He made a vessel worthy 
to produce and present something in the body. He invested some gold in you and some jewels and some precious ointment inside of you. And brother, you're a great benefit to the body of Christ. I want you to know that. It means something when you stand up before the people and you, and, you, and you can't get out a word or two for a few minutes and you struggle. Then you start walking around a little bit. And then you're going to tell how good, how wonderful he is. That's my God is what he said. And you brought me some more water. Y'all got another hour out of it. Praise God. No, y'all ain't. But you're a vessel of honor, brother. But you owe it to the Lord. You didn't, you didn't do it. You have nothing in the world, but he done it. Oh, he done it for me too. Tony, he done it for you. Jamie, he done it for you. He come and put something in you that didn't belong to you. He put a quality to character of you that, that screams about the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give it to him. You owe him that. He's due all honor and praise. Is that true? Glory to God. Saul wasn't worth the hoot. He was the worthless critter ever on the planet. He was mean. He was bloodthirsty. You know, Saul, he, the, the first recordings we have about him is he's down there holding a coach for the people stoning Stephen. And one verse, so he didn't just consent to him. He took great glee in it. He sat in and watched him, said, throw, it, throw another one. He ain't dead yet. Throw another one. It, that ain't a good person. And it said, you know what happened right after he was that stoning? Immediately, it's, uh, Acts chapter 8, it said, and he immediately went into every house, dragging out men and women, putting them in prison, consenting to their death. He was waiting, that's the he put them there. This wasn't a good man. He didn't have no light in him. Well, but a short time later, you read another, you read another version about Saul to Paul. Because Jesus Christ met him on the way and he knocked him. He fell down. I had to look at him every time because he used to be, he used, I think he preached that as a boy. How he was knocked off his horse. And brother, what brother, what brother Godwin? Who was in good way? Brother, the big tall brother. I know his name like I know my own. Brother Huggins. Let Elmer know so the Bible don't say nothing about him riding no horse. So what blessed, he knocked him down. Whatever happened, it blinded him and the Lord, he revealed something to him. How many of did he knock down? Aren't you glad that he knocked you down one day and he changed your direction, made you a vessel of prey and from that day, Paul knew he owed God. He said, I, he said I, it's no longer I live. But it's Christ that lives in me. He's the one that does these things. How about going? Let me read you one more scripture. I, I want to get to you about, the, about that second about. I didn't turn my book. Psalms 29 2. Y'all still there? What's the second part of that scripture say? The beauty of his praise. No, the beauty of holding. He's a praise and worship him. And the beauty, not his holiness. He told, he's always holy. There ain't never time that God ain't holy. But he said, I want you to praise him in the beauty of holiness. In other words, I want you to get holy. Another version I read says, in the, I want you to worship him in the proper attire. You get dressed. You put on the whole armor of God. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Book of Colossians, where I was going to go, that I ain't going to go down. But it talks to you. He said, he said y'all are the elect of God. He said, put on brotherly kindness. He said, put on love and put on compassion. And put on these things that are attributed to the grace of Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about, getting dressed and worshiping him in proper attire. But we're going to do that another time. I want to go one more story with you. In, Matt, in, in, in John, the fourth chapter, just, just for a minute. I find the longer you preach, the, you never get through. You just, you just move on. As Brother Doug was talking about, it, it is astonishing how it does not matter how many times you read the Scripture. It don't matter. It's like last week when Kenny was talking about that. Now faith is a substance. 
And I've read it a million times and I've never seen that he's talking about now faith. Now faith, not tomorrow faith, right? Yesterday, now faith. Now faith. Yesterday faith it ain't, ain't got no power in it. Tomorrow's faith ain't gonna help you. Ain't gonna help you live today. But it's now faith. Right now. See, I ain't never seen that before. It's just he can open a word up here and lays it in your soul. You go, whoa, Lord, that was good. You know it was him? Because you know you ain't that smart. No, I can't dig nothing out. Something that good had to come from the Lord. It said, Ford one. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, this ain't got nothing to do with it, but I want to make sure I cover my four scriptures. Brother Brian, you, I'm, I'm, I'm passing them four. He said, Oh, Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. But he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Y'all with me on this next verse? What it say? He must needs. Uh, he must needs. I can't, pay, you just can't. I can't, stand, I can't go by that scripture without stopping because it, it applies to me. Sister Phyllis, did he must needs come by your bay one day? This must needs was for a specific person. The must needs wasn't for every, it was for one person. He said, I see something. There's a lady down there that don't nobody think much of, Phyllis. They didn't, they didn't put her to the side. They won't even associate with her. Matter of fact, she had to go to the well at 12 o'clock noon. Nobody does. That is too hot. They're coming in the morning. You know why she went? Because their mother ladies wouldn't have her there. And their mother ladies weren't going to have their husbands going up in there neither. So no, no, no. This woman doesn't have five. They knew that too. And they know she was living with a man that was not her husband. They knew that too. They wouldn't have nothing to do with her. Oh, but the God of glory. He looked down. He didn't see Somebody unredeemable. He sees somebody who needed him. He said, oh, he said, I must needs go down there. I remember the day that he come down my way because there was a must needs. And a little old preacher up there in the other side of Mississippi, the Lord did with him. He said, I need you to go somewhere. He didn't come as an evangelist to me. He didn't come as a preacher. He come as the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he looked at it, I said, Tommy Ganey, the Lord Jesus sent me to tell you he loves you. Will you ever forget it? Throughout, th through eternity, like, you will never forget the time the Lord Jesus come and spoke to you. J.B., you ain't here because this, this dear brother Michael, I'm going to call him a Yankee. And Lord, check me on that Yankee stuff. Come way down. You ain't here because he come courting you, but I'm glad he's courting you. How's the courting go? <laughs> Y'all tell him that's the church. But you ain't here because of that. But you're here because the Lord Jesus Christ seen you. Amen. And he must needs come by your way because he want to reveal something to you. Aren't you glad he must needs come by your way? I believe he must needs come by Fairhope this morning because he wants the people to know something. That he loves us. That he wants us to know him more than we ever have before. There's more in here. But I'm going to quit on that note because I love it. Must needs come by this way. And it's... Worship is a powerful weapon that we can use against an adversary and it squanches all his bows. It squanches all the conflict and all the worry. But it's just very difficult for people to sell out to worship because worship is not just verbal. It is an expression. He said, clap your hands, all you nations. He said, sing, shout, Dance, run, do all these things. Yes, if you're, oh, but when the spirit hits you, but the spirit that hits you, you just go on and get in it. You go on, he's not obligated to hit you. No, We're obligated to worship him. Worship. We the one that owes something. Yes. It's due. Oh, if we'll do that. Yes. I notice Holly standing up way back there with her hands raised. Amen. Sister, don't you feel out of place doing that? No, no you don't feel out of place. Why? Because it's him. You ain't holding your hands up for, for Jeremy. You ain't holding them up for Benjamin. You're holding them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, and he appreciates it. It's a sacrifice of praise, a sweet smelling odor. And he says, yes, I'm well pleased in that. I want to please him. How about you? May the Lord bless you. Y'all know your fuck. Praise God.
We didn't get even get two scriptures, did we? Two scriptures read? No, we got about nine scriptures. We never been here six. Paul. All right, Brother Brian. Be ready tonight. <laughs> uh, but Larry, he came looking for me. Larry has a knee, come right on up. One night while on life raging sea, it looked as if I would suffer defeat. At the blackness of night, close off the light, my heart sank with fear. My desperate cry rang out with fright. All I could see was no hope in sight. With faith all but gone, I met the one who came looking for me. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He made a way when there was no way that I could see. I'd drifted so far. Jesus was near to rescue my soul and calm all my fears. I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan was to foil and put me away. I drifted so far, but anyone cared? That I'd soon be lost I knew my destruction Was a matter of time Jesus appeared He said this one is mine I'm safe with no harm For he walked through the storm When he was looking for me He came looking for me He came looking for me Drifted so far, but Jesus was near to rescue my soul and calm all my fears. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. You know, Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan was to foil and put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. Jesus appeared. He said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe with no harm because he walked through the storm when he was looking for me. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He made a way when there was no way that I could see. I drifted so far, but Jesus was near to rescue my soul and calm all my fears. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me.
You know, a, a crow is the only bird that will fool with an eagle. And he'll climb on his back and just, just peck him in the, in the back of the head and, and peck on him. But you know what the eagle does? He just flies up higher and higher and higher and until the crow can't breathe anymore and he just falls off. And that's where we need to be. Just get up there with the Lord so everything else will just fall apart. Heavenly Father, God, we love you today. We Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that we feel, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for drawing us. God, for calling us, Lord, when we were lost and undone. Lord, for calling us by name. Lord, for giving our sin. Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. And God, we thank you for the love, Lord, that you have for each one of us. And Father, we just ask that you would help us, Lord, to love one another. God, to know what that love is like. God, to forgive one another and just trust in you. Lord, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name. 